So maybe you're in a situation where you have something wrong with your recovery phrase. Maybe you've lost a couple of words or your wallet is not accepting it, saying it's invalid or something like that. In terms of self-custody, any of these situations are absolute nightmare fuel and can be something that causes people to panic and wonder, you know, have they lost everything or is there something you can do about it? Fortunately, with tools like BTC Recover, if you've just made a simple mistake, maybe a small transcription mistake, or maybe you just have a few characters wrong in your backup, it's often quite possible to regain access to your wallet. So in this video, I'm just going to run through how to set up BTC Recover on Windows, run through some of the issues that people sometimes run into depending on the version of Windows you are running, as well as how to enable GPU acceleration, which can significantly boost the performance for certain types of recoveries. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now, the very first thing I'm actually gonna talk about is Windows S mode, and it'll become quickly apparent whether this first step applies to you or not. And if it doesn't, you can just jump to the next chapter in the video. So basically what I have here is a fresh installation of Windows 11 and it's actually running in S mode. And the way we can tell is, for example, if I go down to the start menu, if I just type in CMD, so that is command prompt, and then try to run that, it will actually give me a security warning like this. And the thing with Windows S mode is it will give you this same warning anytime you try to install any software on your computer that has not been downloaded from the Microsoft stores. In terms of being able to run BTC Recover, uh, we need to be able to run stuff in the command line. So S mode is a non-starter and the first step is to disable S mode. Fortunately, that is actually quite straightforward. So when we get a message like this, it actually says, you know, do you still want to run this unverified app? And we can click on see how and that will actually take us to the Microsoft Store, which basically gives us a warning saying that you cannot switch back to S mode once you have switched out. And then we'll just say get. Basically, it's gonna prompt us to log in with a Microsoft account. And there you go, you can see now we're logged in. So we'll just click that again. And there you go. So now it says you're all set. You've switched out of S mode and can now install apps from outside the store. So we'll just say close. And now you'll see if I try to open command prompt, I'll just click on there. It actually opens it up without any issue. All right, so now that we've disabled S mode, we can just proceed with the normal installation process. And before we go any further, it is worth saying, if you are someone who watches this video and decides the whole thing is just too complicated, I do offer both private sessions and trust recoveries. If that is a service that you would like to use, uh, you can request one of those on my website here. Though with all of that said, I still think this is something most people can do themselves with a bit of assistance. So let's keep going with how to do it yourself. First thing I'm gonna do is just head over to my GitHub. And basically this here is the repository for BTC Recover and the documentation is all over here at uh, btcrecover.readthedocs.io. And we are just gonna follow the basic installation and testing and follow this process here. First thing we're gonna do is just download BTC Recover. We won't worry about using Git. We'll just download this file here. So I'll just right click on that. And just say save link as, and we'll just shove that into the downloads folder. It could be anywhere, but we'll just put it in downloads for now. And then once the download is complete, we'll just navigate to the downloads folder and see the file we just downloaded. Basically we can just right click on that file and we can just say extract all. And look, we'll just stick with the defaults for now and stick it into the download folder. So this folder now is the folder with all the BTC Recover files in it. Now, when it comes to installing Python, there are actually two ways we can do this on Windows. The first way is just to jump over to python.org to download the latest release of Python and install it using the installer, making sure you check to add Python to the path, otherwise nothing will work. Or you can install Python off the Windows Store. And the challenge here is that Windows Store is gonna become the default method recommended by Python from the end of next year, that is the end of 2026. So rather than run through the normal installer that I've covered in previous videos in the documentation, I'll actually just show you what it looks like to use the Windows Store to install Python. And the interesting thing with the Windows one is if I just open up command prompt and just type in the word Python, it will actually automatically open up the Windows Store and the recommended version of Python, which in this instance is Python 3.13. So I'll say get. So there you go, that is Python installed from the Windows Store. And if I now just type in Python, there you go, it shows me the version of Python that is on here. So I'll say exit. And if I say pip, 
we can see that works as well. So the next step here is to install the requirements via Python pip. And the command we need to do that is actually given just here. So what we're gonna do is we'll just copy that one and we'll go back into our download folder. So this is where we extracted BTC Recover back in step one. And I'm actually gonna right click on that and just say open in terminal, uh, just cause that is a nice easy way to get us right to the folder we want to be in. Uh, this is actually using PowerShell and not command prompt, but it's mostly the same in terms of the commands. So if I just right click to paste that command in and hit enter, it will install all of the requirements for basic recoveries in BTC Recover. And there you go. So just like that, all the basics have actually now been installed. So we could actually jump straight to step four and say testing your installation. And just run that. Okay, and there we go. We can see everything was passed. So that is great. And if all you need to do is a basic Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet recovery or something like that, uh, the essential packages are normally all you need. So you're pretty much ready to go as of right now. And if you want to double check that, you can basically just go into the basic recovery examples, uh, copy one of the commands there and just paste it straight in. So in this instance, it's just running a basic recovery for one missing word for a native SegWit wallet. And we can actually see that it will just run through and uh, find the seed pretty much straight away. Uh, again, verifying for us that everything is working as it should. Now, the next thing you might want to be able to do is to enable GPU acceleration because depending on your wallet type, that can make a huge difference, uh, particularly for things like Bitcoin Core. Fortunately, the process on Windows is pretty straightforward. The GPU in this computer is an RTX 5090. Even though the device is correctly listed here, we actually need to install the NVIDIA driver to be able to get OpenCL working properly. So we'll just head over to uh, NVIDIA. And if you're just running on a normal desktop PC, you probably just want the game ready driver. So I'll just download that. Once that's downloaded, we'll just run it, install it with all the defaults. Okay, and there we go. So we'll just close that NVIDIA app. Uh, on the Python side, you pretty much just go back here into command prompt and just type in pip3 install um, py open CL and just hit enter. Uh, it'll actually just install a bunch of extra packages that we need for open CL. So for example, that uh, basic command I ran before, I could now just say hyphen hyphen enable open CL at the end. Uh, you will see that this time it actually works. So it's actually, it does generate a few warnings when it's compiling the uh, kernel that is normal, uh, but you can see it is now working. There you go. Uh, we can see it did find the seed just like before. And if we go up here, so we can see that it detected the uh, NVIDIA OpenCL platform here and adjusted the number of worker threads based on how much uh, GPU memory was available on the graphics card. Now, in terms of hardware compatibility, I've got GeForce cards and focus around that. Uh, your mileage with other OpenCL compatible cards may vary, it should work, but um, if it doesn't, uh, you're kind of on your own. Uh, the other thing to say is that the performance boost you will get from having a graphics card will vary dramatically depending on the CPU you're comparing it to, uh, as well as the type of recovery you are doing. So for most of the recoveries I do, I actually find the Ryzen 9950X uh, 16 core CPU to actually be better bang for your buck than high-end graphics cards. Though again, that's probably just a feature of graphics cards being expensive right now and could vary uh, from time to time. Okay, so the last thing we'll look at in terms of installation is how to install the full requirements. For example, if you try and run a recovery where you don't have the required modules installed, it'll actually give you an error message and tell you the command you need to install uh, that specific module. So you don't actually need to install the full set of modules. Uh, you might be able to get away with just one or two extras. So that said, I'm just gonna run through installing the full requirements, which will also show you how to install any of the other prerequisites you need to install along the way. So basically, if we just go back here to the documentation, we can get this command here, which gives us all of the packages for extended wallet support. And if we try and run that in Windows, just like we did before, you'll see that it doesn't actually work because we need to have the Microsoft Visual C++ tools required. Fortunately, it tells us where to get them. 
So we can just download them from here. And basically what we want is this one here. So we want the C++ uh, build tools. So we just check that one there. You'll see that it's gonna need another nine gig. So we'll just say install. So once that is done, we can go back over here, press the up arrow and run that again and see how much further through we get. And as you'll see, this is pretty much just a case of following the bouncing ball in terms of the error messages. Most of them actually tell you how to fix it. Oh yes, that's true, that's right. So we also need to install Rust now as well. So we'll just go to rustup.rs. and we'll just download and install Rust RNIT. I'm pretty sure we already have the Visual Studio. Okay, and that's done. So now I'll just hit enter, that automatically closes the window. We'll go back to the command prompt we were in before. So basically the thing with Rust is we actually need to close the command prompt and open it again before it will recognize that Rust is now available. So we'll just go back to the folder in our downloads. And we'll just open again in terminal That'll be a nice fresh new terminal. Actually, if I press the up arrow, it actually comes back from before. So now we'll just do that again. Ah, yes, that's right. We also need this one for Python above 3.12. So basically it actually tells us the command right here to use. So for PowerShell, we actually cannot just copy and paste uh, this command here. It doesn't actually work, uh, but what we can do is we can just type in, so dollar sign env, and then we will paste this, because we're gonna set this, this is the environment variable we're gonna set. I'll right click to paste it, and then we'll just say equals, and then we'll just say one, we'll put one there in little quotes, and hit enter, and now we'll run it again. And there we go, so everything is installed. So for example, if we just do like a slip 39 recovery now that we have all the extended stuff in there, that will just work. So I can just copy that from the usage examples. Go back here and paste it in and hit enter and it will just work. And there you go. All right, so basically we've installed the basic requirements, the GPU acceleration, and all of the extended uh, modules as well. So all of the functionality available in BTC Recover will now work on this system. So there you go, that is how to install BTC Recover on Windows. And hopefully this is a tool you never actually need to use, but it is helpful to know that it exists if you find yourself in that situation that you need it. And again, this can be a fantastic way just to get familiar with BTC Recover just on your standard desktop environment before actually running your recovery on an air gap system, just because all the syntax for BTC Recover is the same across different platforms. Uh, if you do want to run BTC Recover on your standard desktop environment, you need to make sure that you disconnect all networking on your computer. So that's turning off Wi-Fi, unplugging the network cable, and do all of that before you go entering any seed words into your computer. And then making sure that you only reconnect networking on your desktop machine after you have not only recovered the correct seed, but moved the funds off that seed, removing any chance that malware on your computer could leak that seed and allow someone to take all of your funds. And if you're trying to give this process a go and you find it a bit confusing or you're getting stuck, just leave a reply in the comment section. Uh, likewise, if you actually want a video call where we run through step-by-step -step how to install this on your computer, you can request a private session. Uh, or if when you look at this, you're like, wow, that is just way too complicated, not something that you think you'd be able to learn and do, uh, you can also then request a trusted recovery and you can request all of these paid services just through my website here. So there you go. I hope it was helpful. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.